Sometimes the old school gold piles up so fast that even old retro can't appreciate it in real time. That was definitely the case the last time we went to Bacon's Tackle in Shreveport, Louisiana, when Michael Bacon showed us his private collection of FLB Flood Florida Shiners. To me, this lure is somewhere between an antique gimmick lure and an exquisite piece of folk art. But either way, they are as expensive as they are rare. I had the privilege to get my hands on three of these recently at Bacon's, but it wasn't until I got home and did a little research that I realized just how special that encounter truly was. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. The story of the Florida Shiner starts out in a central Florida town by the name of Frostproof. So named as a marketing ploy to attract would-be citrus farmers in search of a suitable climate in which to plant their crop. In 1911, a 24-year-old serviceman by the name of Fred L.B. Flood settled in Frostproof, where he cleared five acres of land in hopes of starting his own citrus orchard. A farmer, hunter, and fisherman Flood began whittling lures out of cypress trees, and on September 2nd of 1928, FLB Flood applied for a U.S. patent on his fish bait. Flood sold his lures out of the same roadside stand where he sold his oranges. Truly a work of art, the Florida Shiner has to be one of the wildest creations I've ever seen. It came equipped with a carved, curved body, a pair of metal fins, and two stationary treble hooks. But probably the most unique aspect of the Florida Shiner was that it had a line tie on the side of the bait, which caused it to swim in a large circle upon retrieve. For my Japanese bass and buds out there, the Florida Shiner reminds me a lot of the Depths Killer Compass. While the Florida Shiner could be cast and retrieved like a traditional lure, it was perhaps best suited for an old-timey technique known as doodle socking. With this technique, an angler would sneak up on a bass and use a long bamboo or cane rod to doodle a lure on the surface in sort of a figure eight motion and basically make as much commotion as possible until angering that bass into silencing the intruder. In my research, I did find a great ad on the Florida Shiner claiming to be the best bass bait, barring none. According to this ad, a Shiner is a staple food for a bass like meat and potatoes are to you. It's supposed to be strong, dependable, handmade, and lifelike. And FLB Flood even promised to give you a free lure for every photograph you sent him of a catch on the Florida Shiner. Fred Shiner underwent a couple of modifications over the years. The first in 1926, when a man named Ed Atchner, who was renting a cabin behind Flood's home, offered to produce his lures on a lathe in return for free rent. Previously, the lures were only offered in an aluminum color, but in 1927, Fred's son-in-law, James Bacchus, began to paint the lures to resemble the wild shiners in the surrounding areas. Now, let's get on over to Bacon's to show you a couple of these amazing lures up close. So, what is, what is this? Flood minnows. Flood minnows? All three sizes. Of the flood minnow. And, okay. So, first off, where did you get these? Florida. Florida? Yeah. Oh, it, it was an advertisement for these flood minnows, and I called. He said, Yeah, I got some. Uh, I said, Man, I'm going out of town. I'm going to Florida. I won't be back till next week. He said, Where are you going in Florida? I forget where it was Seaside, Sea Grove, something. He said, My friend's got a condo down there. I'll just give them to him. He's going down. And you just uh, drive by his condo, pick them up, and then, uh, you know, if you like them, send me the money. I said, you're going to let me take baits like that and let me pay you when I get back? He said, oh, yeah. He said, uh, how do you know I'm going to pay you? He said, oh, I was there when you came up with Smithwick's trailer with all the stuff on it. Oh. I helped you unload. 
Did he? I said, oh, yeah, I doubt it. But anyway, those so, are all three sizes. And what about this bait? So before we even open it, so what is, so it's called the Florida Shiner? Uh, FP Flood. I think it's 26, 27. What makes them so rare? Them and when were they made? Like, what do you know in about the, the company? In the 20s. In the 20s, okay. Mm -hmm. So these are three baits and they came in three sizes mm -hmm. in the 1920s. And that's three baits, three sizes, mint, brand new in boxes with paperwork. Unheard of. There we go. And then what is this? That's just one unfinished one. So this is, okay, so this is the minnow itself. Yes. And what are these, hook hangers? Uh, wait. Wait, weights, and, weights. Mm -hmm. and that's what the bait looks like, huh? That's it. Okay, I've never, I've never seen one of these. I know they're rare as hens. Which one do you start with? No, I'd go small and go big because they, they get rare in that order. Okay, so there we go. Oh. Is that cool or what? <laughs> okay, look at that, guys. I'm gonna keep that as. Oh wow, that is like a piece of artwork. It is. Wow, and it's and it's a wooden bait. Yes, yes. Let's take this out super. Yeah, it's two different line ties. You can go pull from the side, and then once. And then there's also bent. fins on the top as well, mm -hmm. huh? And they spin around like this when you reel it, like it's an injured minnow. It's just crazy. I've made a prototype and threw it in the swimming pool. It's kind of neat. And what are these? And so it's got a line tie on the side yeah, there. Yeah. And one, the top. Once further advanced than the other and it makes it spin at the tighter circle so depending on so you can tie it on either side exactly. oh wow look at that guy so there's only a there's no tie at the nose of this bait it comes into you perpendicular like it's been injured I mean, it's, and then what are these fins made of it's tin okay and just a piece of that's mint mm -hmm. never fished flood minnow <sighs> and it's got yeah, yeah. A little, real, and then, real. yeah, I'm not going to pull this out. Yeah. It just says how to use the flood minnow. And that looks old. We're going to leave that in. Yeah, <laughs> and look at that. Okay. How to use your Florida flood minnow. Holy cow. That is amazing. So here's the second one in the size, so it came in three sizes. So there's the box for the second flood minnow. Might have been some writing on there at one time, but that's kind of gotten lost. Look at that, that is wild. And those hooks don't really move. They're rigid. They're rigid. They're mm -hmm. They are rigid. So you can imagine tying this thing. That that's got to have a wild, wild action. I've thrown one in a swimming pool and it just looks like this. It's, it's pretty neat. Okay, yeah. almost like a salmon lure. Yeah. Just spins around. Like a trolling plug. Yeah, like yeah. a trolling plug for salmon. Wow. Okay, we'll put that one there. And then here's the big dog. This would be good if like a barracuda got a hold of this, huh? <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, and this one's a different color yeah, too. Yeah. I'm gonna hold this up and then pull it out of here. Ooh. So this was hand painted. Mm -hmm. Took a long time. Look at that gorgeous bait. You know, it kind of has the same dots as a pepper put on his. Yeah. Mm -hmm sort of spotted ape inspired sort yeah. of dots too huh wow and oh and it does say so on the side got some verbiage there patent applied for patent applied for Whew, so that is it so that is so is that like the holy grail of florida lures oh i don't know i'm not a florida collector but it's it's tough to get all three sizes all three sizes in yeah wow like I told you, sometimes the old school gold piles up so fast, even old retro can't appreciate it in real time. That was a wild trip to Bacon's and I am so thankful that Michael Bacon shared those floors with me, even though I didn't really know what I was looking at at the time. The Florida Shiner was offered in three sizes and seven different colors. And over a seven year period, 
over 1,000 of those amazing lures were made. But in 1933, as the Great Depression choked the nation, production of FLB Flood's masterpiece was ceased. If you want to learn more about the Florida Shiner, there are a couple of great uh, internet resources that I found in the research for this episode. As always, I will drop links down below, but here are three websites that really helped out in the history and photographs of the Florida Shiner. First is oldfloridalures.com, which has probably the most detailed history on the Florida Shiner that I could find. Also, Ron Gast over at luresandreels.com was a huge help, and he's got a really nice page dedicated to the Florida Shiner with some great pictures of FLB Flood. And lastly, I was poking around at Joe's Old Lures, which is at joeyates.com, and this man has an epic collection that I hope to see in person one day soon. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this trip back to the early 1900s, and thanks again to Michael Bacon for sharing his collection with the old Bass and Buds. Until next time, keep the carpet side up, and definitely, Fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'.